All right, today we're going to learn how to edit a black and white landscape. We are going to use the same image that we use for the color landscape. We're going to go to File and we're going to Open. We are going to go to the P drive. In the P drive, you are going to see the Photo Demo Example folder. Edit transform uh, you're going to see I'm sorry landscape edit and in that folder you're going to see the image number 6229 and we're going to go ahead and open that all right so we are going to duplicate this image we are going to call this working image just the same way did for the color landscape practice. This is where we're going to do all our work. So we're going to go in, we're going to use our lasso tool. Yes, I'm going to have you do this again. I'm going to have you practice working with the levels again. It's important that you do this multiple times because this is a not exactly easy and you do need practice. So we're going to go in with our lasso tool, which is the third tool d down on the vertical toolbar, we're going to go to refine edges and we're going to feather it out. OK. Now we're going to go to image adjustments levels and we're going to move our slider all the way to the right and while we're doing that we are darkening our sky so look at that. You see how that moves to the right and we are darkening our sky. We're going to say OK. Now we're going to go in and we're going to select another area of the sky an area that's a little bit lighter, okay, just this lighter uh, cloud area. Going to go to Refine Edge. I'm going to feather this out to 250. Going to say OK. Come up to my Image, Adjustments, Levels, and again I'm going to move my slider over to the right so that my clouds become darker. I see more detail in my clouds. Going to say OK, select deselect. Now I'm going to select just the bottom part of this castle. I am going to lighten the bottom part of the castle slightly. So I went in, I drew in with my lasso tool, refine edge, feather it to 250, OK, go to image, adjustments, and levels. Going to now move the slider all the way to the left side where the mountain starts and you'll see that the bottom of the castle becomes lighter. I'm going to say OK. Now I'm noticing that the top of my castle wall is a little bit darker so I'm going to select just the first top part of the castle wall. I'm going to go to refine edge. I'm not going to be able to feather this all the way to 250 because it's too small of a selection so I'm going to put it to about 100. Say OK. And now I'm going to go to Image Adjustments Levels and again I'm going to this time move the middle slider a little bit to the left so that I'm lightening the wall. OK. Now I'm going to select the top of the tower where it's very dark. Again I'm not going to be able to refine this all the way to 250. I'm only going to be able to refine it to about 100 which is fine. And I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Levels, and this time I'm going to move my slider a little bit over to the left, lightening the top of the castle tower. OK. So now I'm ready to add in my contrast layer. I'm going to come over here to my Image Adjustment layer, Create New Fill or ad Image Adjustment layer, right down here at the bottom. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to choose Brightness and Contrast. We look at our layer, we can see that that's starting to develop here. So I'm going to add a little bit of contrast and just a little bit of brightness. Okay. I don't know how this happened, but somehow we got my, my layer mask got in a little bit messed up here. So I'm going to go in and um, fix my layer mask here so that I should have a black layer mask right here. Okay, so whenever I make any kind of adjustment, it should be impacting the entire the entire image. Okay. Um, 
Let's try this again. I'm going to get rid of that layer and I'm going to go ahead and put in brightness contrast. There we go. This is what my layer mask should look like. It should be it should be a white layer mask. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of contrast, overall contrast, and a little bit of bring the brightness down just a tad and overall contrast so that I'm Okay, so that looks pretty good. So if I turn that off, we can see here that I've kind of given a little bit of darkness, but at the same time, given a little more contrast. Maybe I'll bring the lightness up just a tad bit more. Okay. So then it's time to put in our black and white layer. So I'll go ahead and do that. So now I've got my black and white layer. What I want to do on the black and white layer is I want to intensify the blue sky. So I'm going to move my blue sky down a little bit. You can see as I move the cyan to the left, it makes my black and my sky very dark. Same thing, um, I'm going to move my blues down a little bit, so it's making my sky very dark. And I'm going to maybe adjust my magenta a little bit. Um, I'm going to darken my greens, so I'm going to move that down a little bit. And then I'm going to brighten my yellows, bring that up slightly, and then my red. I'm just going to keep my red at 40. All right, so now I have four layers, background, working image, brightness, contrast, and black and white. So now I want you to click on your working image. We're going to go in and we are going to do some retouching using our clone tool. I'm going to remove the crest. I'm going to click Alt, and I'm going to remove that crest. And now I'm going to clone in some of the sky over here. So I'm going to clone in some of that sky. So I've got a darker sky. All right, so if we turn that working image off, we can see what it looked like originally. And with the cloning, I made that sky a little bit darker. OK, so we're going to introduce a new tool. And we need to do this on our working image layer. It's called our Burn and Dodge tool. It's right over here. So I'm going to click on my Dodge tool. I'm going to make sure my, my range is set to midtones and my exposure is set to 50. You're going to notice a little brush. Well, we can control that brush size. We want to make sure we have a nice soft brush. So you want to click the one on the very left. And we can control our brush size. Okay. The purpose of the Dodge tool is to lighten areas. So what you want to do is you want to go in and lighten areas that are dark. You can control our brush size. And the reason why we are l lightening these darker areas is to bring out more details in those dark areas. Okay, so you can see here that I'm slowly but surely going in and lightening my areas that are a little bit darker. Uh, my exposure is set to 50. My midtones uh, is, is the range I want to have selected. So I'm going in and I'm just working on this top tower area that happened to be a little bit darker. I'm going in to lighten it. And I'm just slowly but surely left clicking on my mouse mouse as I lighten that. And I'm also going to lighten this right here on the wall along the edge here, add in a little more detail. I may want to actually change my exposure to maybe about 30% because that will make it a little more gradual and it will uh, give me a little more control so that I, if I you know, make a mistake, I don't have to necessarily go on my history, you know, maybe only one step back on my history to undo any mistake I li I don't like. So I'm just going to kind of keep going through here and just look at some of the areas that are dark that I want to lighten and bring out some of the details a little more. So I think that looks pretty good. Now I want to try my um, burn burning tool, which is this one that looks kind of like a hand. And my burning tool, what that does is it light, it actually darkens areas that are lighter. So you can see here, I'm starting to kind of darken some of this cloud area. And what it does is it darkens that area to bring out more detail in the light areas. So I'm going to go in and I'm actually going to intensify these cloud details a little more. Um, maybe darken 
this one little white area that's next to the castle door. But one thing I do have to be careful about is I want my exposure set to about 30%, not 50, is that it's very easy to kind of overdo it and make these kind of like black or dark like tones that don't look natural. So you have to be really careful because um, the whites, sometimes in those white areas, um, you can't make it go darker. Um, it just, there's no detail there. It's just not possible. So sometimes you kind of have to stop because what all you're doing is, is causing like a gray area to build up and that doesn't look very good. Also, if you overdo it, you cause pixel damage. So if I get in really close on my image, um, I don't want to cause pixel damage. Um, and you basically, if I get in really close, what happens is you actually start to see the little square pixels starting to develop and that's called pixel damage or noise. We don't want that to, to occur. So you have to be kind of be careful when you're doing the lightning and the, uh, the dodging. Okay, so when you're doing the dodging and the burning, either way you have to be really careful that you don't cause damage uh, or noise to the image. So the final step is to add in a vignette. I'm going to come over here and add in a solid color vignette. Again, I'm going to make sure I've selected my right layer mask. I'm going to go in with a brush, uh, 2500 in size, nice round soft brush. So I'm going to select the one on the left here, 2500 in size. My opacity, I'm going to put down to 50. And now I'm going to start to click in there. And on my layer mask, um, it's going to look black along the top with uh, a little bit of white. If we look at our layer mask here, a little bit of white along the bottom. And what we're doing is we're just adding a little bit of darkness to the edge of our image on the bottom, just slightly. And when you're done, you're going to go File, Save As, and you're going to go into the P drive. You're going to select the period that you're in. So if you're in period one, you'll select period one or period two or period three. And in that folder, you're going to see the landscape edit. You're going to want to save this as your first initial, last name. And so my first initial, last name, I'm going to call this B for black. W for white, black and white practice. So it's going to be C underscore Salinas B W P. So in this file, you're going to have two versions of this image. You're going to have a color version and a black and white version of this image. And you're going to click on the save button.